we have uh, next uh, uh, Dr. Um, Sebastian, Sebastian Kochinescu. Uh, Sebastian, if you would like to come forward or you can speak from where you are, that's absolutely fine. Um, let me unmute you. Okay, here you are, right, that's good. Sebastian, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. So, yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Excellent. So, Dr. Thank Sebastian Kochinescu is a is fantastic reviewer, editor for our journal. He's been with us for, um, I think, since the very beginning, since 2018. Yes, that's right. And, um, and a fantastic reviewer, uh, very thorough reviews he writes, and we have received excellent feedback from the authors his reviews have really really helped the web3 community uh, they are very detailed very constructive and um, and really help to advance better science so we thought we invite uh, sebastian today he's uh, from romania and but he's very global you you may have seen him on linkedin speaking here and there and all the various events around the globe so i've asked uh, sebastian to share some insights really for the authors and also for reviewers new reviewers when they are uh, uh, looking to review a paper what are the common mistakes because i'm sure he does see a lot of mistakes a lot of errors a lot of issues with the with the with papers the way they are written so um, i will ask sebastian to just share some insights on his experience of reviewing papers uh, writing papers editing papers and hopefully that will benefit us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I would love to first uh, tell you a, a few things about supply chains, <laughs> not about reviewing. Uh, I know I only really have a few minutes, but I will keep it very brief. So if uh, do Professor Dr. Mary is still here, uh, I totally agree with, uh, with what you uh, said earlier, with uh, the autopsies of companies that you are, that you are doing instead of uh, analyzing thriving companies. I, um, I had a company, I'm one of those companies that <laughs> actually now have to have an autopsy. So five years, we used to, we used to have a supply chain traceability platform called Tailpath, and uh, we've been working um, for several uh, companies and case studies. But what's interesting and what you just mentioned earlier is that we w we've been working from day one, from 2018, uh, when we incorporated in the United States with uh, public blockchains. So both Ethereum and Elrond network that actually today it's called Multiverse X. So uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I noticed too, that most companies failed in this space, in the supply chain space, because they were too private. And then people asked, why should we use an old system, uh, a slow system that is private, instead of using just a very secure database. So to, to end my, uh, my uh, speech on that, I would just like to add that I think that there's a big opportunity here in 2018 at the Blockchain Policy Forum uh, in uh, OECD. We were discussing about how blockchains will revolutionize the supply chain worldwide and unfortunately six years later this haven't happened yet but that's not because of the technology like you mentioned. I think that's because of uh, the actual need of the market. So I think we still have a long way there. Now coming back to the topic that I was uh, asked to, to present today, I, I think uh, scholars could agree with me that there aren't actually many differences between blockchain papers and web-free research and regular research in any field. So I think those these, these uh, items that I will get to right now are just uh, common sense things that uh, all authors should think about and from the reviewers perspective at least in the British Blockchain Association in the journal I would like to congratulate you for having high quality um, papers submitted so my, my job was quite easy from this point of view, I mean, I, I didn't have uh, uh, much to comment on the on the bad side, and I think it was three stars to five always on my reviews, um, and that has something to do with the quality of the journal. So congratulations for that. Um, 
as a personal um, uh, feedback uh, or uh, what uh, my journey is that in 2017 I have uh, been going through the Berkeley um, uh, blockchain program, executive program that was one of the first in the academia and then I started uh, to look around and to see what's going on in the in the uh, academia universe worldwide in terms of blockchain and that's how we've got in touch with VBA and uh, I'm I'm so happy that six years later things are so so uh, further away so the, the steps for uh, reviewing or at least what I'm doing uh, is are as follows uh, I'm first of all looking at how important it is for the field so how is it one of those papers that actually just um, looks at some things going on especially in the uh, private sector and then tries to apply some sort of uh, academic uh, research techniques and to come out with a conclusion or is it a proper uh, research and that's why I need to understand the scope the relevance if it fits within the uh, the journal right because uh, if you take out the blockchain out of uh, the new the um, out of the research the paper when where does it fit then uh, and is it novel enough or not is it does it contribute to um, uh, to the field does it introduce new concepts or maybe frameworks and I know that's kind of difficult to introduce a new framework <laughs> I mean that's the uh, let's say uh, the, the the golden thing for any researcher to start a new framework or to at least apply a new protocol or uh, applications to advance the field however if that happens that's just jackpot from my point of view then I'm a highly technical person and I look at technical soundness if everything checks out uh, and if the authors actually know what they are talking about in technical terms. So if there are some models or protocols or some software implementations, I'm really uh, looking at, at that too. So then, as I said, it's not really related to blockchain, but also to all uh, research, academic research. I look at methodology and how, uh, if it's appropriate and thorough enough, um, if there are some experiments or designs or proof of concepts, I need to assess them and if the results are adu adu adequate and uh, they provide uh, real data. Um, and of course, uh, there should be very clear, I, I mean that's also in the process in the, in the software that we are using, the clarity, precision, it should be the paper should be well written clearly to explain all technical details diagrams flowcharts everything should be used uh, super effectively to to highlight the concepts uh, and then I mean that's one of the first things the literature review and the background to see uh, if they know where they fit within the academic research uh, if the cited uh, papers are correctly placed um, in, in within the, the research context and um, what I love to have in, in these papers is to see if there are, there's some sort of uh, portal left at the end for future work or for open questions and I'm trying to actu actually add to my feedback for the authors that what do you what do you see this as a just a paper that's been submitted somewhere and that gathers dust or is it something that uh, it's a part of a bigger plan or uh, like you said you had four books on this so it's clearly that your research adds up to something uh, so yeah that's basically my framework if I may say so that's my uh, that's my way of looking at academic uh, research papers in general and uh, I love I just love the high quality of the um, blockchain, British Blockchain Association journal um, papers that, that I'm uh, honored to review. So please do not hesitate to get in touch with me if there are any other uh, questions or follow-up uh, uh, items that we could uh, discuss. My uh, 
email you could be shared uh, for you and uh, thank you for having me today thank you very much uh, sebastian that was very nice excellent summary um sebastian uh, been a fantastic reviewer and sometimes even over the weekend in his own personal time he has been reviewing papers for us uh, so i would like to thank him again once again and just one point i would like to add uh, to sebastian's uh, um, comments on the novelty of paper and also methodology robustness citing uh, references making sure there is a proper uh, conclusion there is no mismatch between what you are uh, proposing you know in the abstract in the introduction and then towards the end uh, also do not uh, uh, be reluctant uh, to publish uh, papers uh, or studies which are uh, inconclusive and that is important because if some study has a negative result so say you wanted to test something uh, to see if it works but it didn't work there is a tendency to not submit those papers uh, for publication because you think that oh it didn't work but actually it, it is equally important to publish negative research as well because um, you will um, we will end up wasting a lot of resources i mean not not we means others so uh, if people don't know that this work has been done they will spend uh, time effort resources on conducting that research and then uh, and then they find out that actually the, some things uh, uh, don't work so if you have done a case study if you have done a project a research and the findings were inconclusive or negative those results results can be very very important for the scientific community as well so thank you very much um, sebastian for your time